Hey, family and friends. Okay, so I've been asked this question about a bazillion times. How do you make such awesome pizza crust? Um, there's really no great answer except practice and figure out what it feels like. So, um, that's a really bad explanation. I thought that I would set you up today with the ingredients to make the crust and I will show you how it is done. Uh, so it's like I'm right there in your kitchen with you, but not in the creepy way. Is we're gonna put all of the flour, four cups, into the bowl. We're gonna add about, I don't know, somewhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon of yeast. It kind of depends how fast you want it to rise. Um, we're gonna let ours sit all day, so it doesn't matter a whole terrible uh, amount. And then we're gonna use uh, a cup and a half of water. So I've got two cups. We'll get about a cup and a half in there. And then we'll just throw it on here. And let it mix. Yeah. Gonna add a little bit of water. So it looks a little bit tough to me. Gonna slowly add water. It's you can't take the water out. You can always add more flour if you mess up. But you want the dough to look pretty loose. Throw a little bit of oil in. Okay, that's really about as, as far as we can go uh, with the machine. Um, you could let it stay in there, but I prefer to get it out and work it by hand because that's when you can really see if your dough is the way that you want it. So I'm going to throw some oil into here so that we can rise inside uh, later on. And. Uh, then we'll see what this dough looks like. It's gonna be very sticky, and you just have to be really careful. Uh, I don't even have any flour out here, so it's gonna stick to my hands, and you're just gonna see. I find that with the sticky dough, if you knead it quickly, it's less likely to stick than if you take your time and really push in, it digs into your hands. So don't be afraid to, to roll it up and give it a really quick push. This is still pretty heavy. I'm gonna throw a little more water in here, which as you can see, isn't gonna hurt anything. We'll just work it in. So you've never disastrously wrecked your dough uh, unless you drop it on the ground and someone sees. The uh, whole wheat dough will be tougher than if you use all white flour, of course and white will taste a bit sweeter but uh, you know I live with Wendy and she prefers if we have some whole grains some real food as she calls it in with the uh, meal Even this dough is a little firmer than I usually like, so I could have went more water. But uh, again, we're going to let it rise a nice long time and that'll stretch it out and fill it full of bubbles so it'll be nice and soft when we're ready for it. We'll push now. And you can see it's springing back a little bit more. The holes aren't so deep. Still gonna go a little longer. You know, you could think between five and 10 minutes. I'm kneading quite quickly, although you might get tired, so it really depends on how many of these fold and pushes you get. All right, it's kind of bouncy. You can see it doesn't leave any deep depressions that stay. They kind of spring back out. Um, if I was gonna stretch it out here, see if we can get the baker's window without tearing it. And you can see that with the whole wheat, you've got some some grain in there that's that's more likely to rip, but that we can get a a really nice stretch on this already before it's risen so we're gonna have a beautiful workable 
pizza crust uh, in a few hours. All right, so put her into back into a bowl. I'm gonna throw it inside my oiled guy. We'll cover that with uh, plastic wrap and uh, and a damp towel. Okay, so got a little bit of plastic wrap and a, a cloth that I just dampened with warm water. We just want to keep the air from getting at the at the dough while it's rising and uh, then I'm just gonna let it sit for well a couple of hours it, it would be okay for it to stay in the refrigerator overnight all right uh, so great pizza is really a combination of three things good crust good sauce and good toppings uh, I've gotten a start on the good crust part we've got it in here rising for the next few hours now I'm gonna show you how I make the sauce um, this method is pretty messy, so at the bare minimum, you're going to want to have a spit guard uh, to cover your frying pan, unless you're doing it outside and you're suitably attired, but even then, it's going to make a mess. So this sauce may not be for you, but uh, you're basically going to need a bulb of garlic, um, I don't know, three pounds of tomatoes. In this case, that's uh, seven tomatoes-ish. For two pizzas, there'll be a little bit of sauce left over, but trust me, it's good, so that's not a problem. You'll need extra virgin olive oil again, and salt and pepper. Uh, so what we wanna do is just get the stems off. We're just gonna do a really rough chop here, because our first step is gonna be softening these tomatoes before we turn the heat way up to bring out the sweetness. This will be so much better once I'm using garden tomatoes, but we've only just planted. So uh, our tomatoes are sitting in the greenhouse and they're only about a foot tall for the plants. Not really gonna do it for us yet. <clears throat> okay. That's good, we're gonna do our garlic. A little smaller than the tomatoes but it's all gonna get pressed through a mill after cooking for quite a while so it doesn't have to be too too small we're not mincing it's like, okay, throw that in okay there we go now we're gonna do up to a half cup of oil for this much you can go as little as a quarter cup I wouldn't go less than a quarter cup if flirting with disaster We'll throw uh, some salt in and pepper. You can add uh, jalapeno peppers, I often do. I'll probably throw some peppers in, but I forgot them in the house, so you won't see them here. Um, really, that's just a taste thing, and you'll figure that out. Okay, there you go. Okay, our next step is the pizza oven. Uh, you won't have one of these probably, although I would go out and get one if I were you. It's really a two stone uh, gas powered pizza oven. There we go. I probably don't need high at first, I'm going to turn the heat down. Um, I made the special attachment out of wire uh, so that I can Put a frying pan in here. All right, this is just so that I can set my frying pan on. So it's essentially an open flame. You can do it in the house in your kitchen. I prefer to do it outside both because I want to be in the sun and because when it starts spitting all over the place, it's not nearly so messy. So we're gonna go with a, a nice medium low heat. And for the first while, I'm gonna cover it uh, and just let them simmer in there and get really soft. Then we're gonna mill out the skins and some of the seeds um, so that we have a nice smooth sauce. Remember, we want the heat low enough that it's simmering, but not 
uh, so high that it's going to burn any of this stuff or make it crispy. We just want it to release the juices from the tomatoes so that it can make its own sauce, which uh, I think we've got it just right. All right, here's uh, three peppers that I had uh, in the freezer that we grew ourselves last year. Bird's eye chili, uh, I think it's a serrano, and uh, some sort of yellow banana pepper, I guess. I'm gonna chop them up and throw them in here quickly. Okay, let's have a look. So you can see um, everything is nice and soft now. It's been, oh, maybe 15 minutes simmering here. A nice even heat. It's not stuck to the bottom. Uh, all of the chunks are quite soft, so they'll be easy to press through the mill. Um, we've had a chance for the flavors to start and cook out uh, into the sauce. So I'll show you what it looks like going through the mill. We're going to use a spatula to... Sometimes it takes two batches. Sometimes I can get it all in here in one. It really depends how many tomatoes you're using. You don't want to miss any of the sauce. We're going to reuse this pan right away so it pays to get it right clean. And then this guy just works beautifully like this. So the juice comes out the bottom. Every uh, couple of rotations you have to spin backwards just to clear the skins as they begin to plug the screen. And you can see that this gets lower and lower as the paddles inside just squish the juice out. Uh, it doesn't get all the seeds. If you were really fussy about it, you could probably put it through cheesecloth. Um, and if you're really not fussy at all and you want to skip this whole process, you can uh, just cook it a bit longer and maybe run it through a blender. You get a, you get a much thicker uh, sauce, but you've got a lot of fiber in there if that's what you want. Um, I find it hard to cook at a really high heat if you leave all of this in because that stuff tends to burn quite easily. There, it's, uh, it's pretty much done. So we'll uh, scrape off the bottom here, stuff that sort of sticks to it. And then we'll pour it back in here. And that is the beginnings of our sauce. Now uh, we're gonna put it back on the pizza oven and cook the hell out of it. Okay, this time we're gonna go with a high heat and we're gonna leave the lid off. We're gonna put the splash guard on, all right? That's gonna let the steam come out so that it can, uh, so that uh, it begins to reduce down and thicken. If you left the lid on, then uh, all the water is gonna stay inside. So we need that to come out, but we don't want the sauce to come exploding out. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, we have the heat cranked up, spit guards on. You can see that it is really boiling now. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the spit guard off and stir it fairly frequently. Not so much at first, but as it reduces down, it will it will want to burn onto the bottom, and uh, and we don't want that. But we do want the heat really high. That's going to caramelize the sugars inside the sauce and uh, make it taste absolutely incredible. You have no idea if you've never tried this process before. I haven't added any sugar, but it's going to come up with some of the sweetest sauce that you've that you've ever tasted. At this stage, the I want you to pay attention to the size of these bubbles and what the texture looks like as I'm scraping it off the bottom. You can see um, the sauce is, is starting to develop a, a thickness to it and hissing when I take it off the bottom. It isn't burning, which means I'm stirring it often enough, uh, which isn't always the case. Uh, you could stop now, but what your real test is gonna be is you're gonna have to taste a little bit of it because it will actually go from tasting um, either watery um, and tangy 
like tomato soup, it'll uh, it'll it'll shift, and the garlic and the tomato will uh, will really uh, the sugars will caramelize, and it will start to taste very very sweet. And that's the stage that I'm aiming for, but it really depends how you like your sauce. I'm gonna give it. It's been about five minutes. I'm gonna give it uh, probably five more. Okay, so trying to do too many things at once. You can see I've got a, a thin layer of, of burn here. It's gonna be hard to clean, but it's actually, that's not a problem. In fact, that's one of the things that's gonna make this sauce so sweet in the end. So I'm actually gonna, if it was a thick layer, that's going to uh, taste like char. But this thin layer, you can see how it comes off pretty easily when you get it moist with the other sauce. And it's actually not going to leave um, black flecks in my sauce as I work it in. It's actually going to dissolve because really that's still sugar as opposed to uh, charcoal. So we caught it just in the nick of time. That's what I get for trying to do my cleaning at the same time as, at the same time as uh, cooking for you guys and filming it. But it's now gotten to just that level of sweetness that I like and you can see that it's nice and thick. The last thing you want is a watery sauce. It's gonna it's gonna put um, it's gonna put oil it's gonna put water into your uh, pizza crust and it's gonna make it take longer to cook and make it feel heavy and soggy. So you, re you really want to get as much of the water out of there as you can and give yourself a nice a nice thick sweet sauce and this is gonna be absolutely spectacular. Okay, the last step we need to do after we've got this sauce, and remember, we started with, uh, what was it, six, seven, uh, eight tomatoes of reasonable size, and that's the sauce we wound up with. Lastly, we have to prepare the, uh, the toppings. And you can use whatever you want. Topping. Uh, I like to do a three or four cheese mix, so I use a Reggiano Parmigiano, I use uh, an Asiago, and I usually use something like this, a, a bocconcini, um, which is, uh, is basically just little matzo balls uh, like this. And I'll show you how to deal with them when we're doing the topping. But uh, while cooking your sauce, because it takes a, quite a while to render down, it's a good time to, to prep your cheese mix and to slice your veggies and, and uh, prep the last of your garlic and stuff. So. That's what we're doing here. A couple bell peppers and some garlic. There you have it. Um, that and the cheeses will go in the fridge and that's gonna be all the toppings that I use on the pizza other than salt pepper and I'm gonna go grab some basil from the greenhouse. So I'm not as privileged as some of you who live in places warm enough where basil can grow year-round uh, but fresh basil is really uh, the best thing ever for pizza. So Wendy as a sign of her extreme love for me has for quite a few years been starting basil in uh, in February and uh, it grows here in the greenhouse as you can see and it's not very big yet but there are a few plants where I can just pinch the tops off uh, and they'll bush out so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the top of these guys I use uh, parchment paper because it uh, helps keep the crust from burning when it's in the oven. Here's our dough. I pushed it down once because it got a little too fat midway through the afternoon. As you can see it had no trouble rising back up again. So we're gonna take uh, this nice soft dough and we're gonna be pretty gentle with it. I'm gonna take about half of it for crust, maybe a little more like that. Let's store half, and this half we're just going to, uh, I'm not going to roll it out because that 
squishes all the air out that we've worked so hard to put in here and it makes our crust tougher to roll out and and a lot more springy and what I want now is a nice easy stretch um, if you leave it too fat at this point when it goes into the oven it's really gonna puff up so you can see even though I'm just leaving a tiny little bit of crust you'll see how much air expands when it gets hot like that um, when you've got this really nice soft crust okay so that's good we've got our sauce that we made we know that we can use close to half of that although here's the rule when you're putting toppings on the pizza less is more so you are tempted as a Western pizza eater to overload your pizza with tons of toppings but that is a mistake keep it simple stupid okay so we're gonna go with half of the, the garlic we're not gonna worry about it being exactly even we're gonna go with uh, half of the <clears throat> bocconcini that uh, that I've drained something like that and uh, you know you can leave them whole or if you like the cheese to spread out better um, but we don't want to cover and smother this thing so that's it for matzo okay don't overdo it uh, I'm gonna throw on some of our peppers this is mostly to make Wendy happy. I'd be happy to just eat it with the cheese and the and the uh, basil garlic. Okay, that's it for peppers. Half of the basil that I picked this afternoon. Spread it out a little bit. cheese that we grated up. I'll throw not a heavy load. You still want to see your toppings. I'm even, you could do less than this even. A little more salt and pepper. And I think we're good to go. Yep. I'm going to peel off some of this from around the edge just so that it uh, so that it doesn't smoke and burn inside the pizza oven doesn't really matter and then throw it onto this paddle and we are going to slide this amazing looking pizza Tip of it to kind of tip down. The oven temperature is about 700 degrees. We've just turned up the heat so it's going to quickly get up to 900 or 1000. There's our pizza in there. We'll check back in on it in a minute. First one's in, 